This is a Wintel Pro fanless Windows 10 mini PC. It has a whopping 2GB of RAM, 32GB eMMC storage, an Intel Atom X5 Z8 350 processor with integrated graphics. It also has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and a 100 megabit Ethernet port and it cost me a massive 85 quid off Amazon. And it's going to be replacing this. Ow. This beast is running a Ryzen 5 1600X. It has 16 gig DDR4 RAM, the 1066 gigabyte NVIDIA graphics card, as well as a 256 gigabyte SSD, and then two HD drives. One is one terabyte and the other one is three terabytes. <laughs> now I've owned that PC for the past few years and I've used it to create the vast majority of my content for this YouTube channel, all the thumbnails and most of the video editing. I also use it to do my own video editing, photo editing, working, general web browsing, as well as gaming. So that little PC has a lot to live up to. Now obviously it's not gonna be able to match it pound for pound and that's where Shadow comes in. Shadow is a full-blown Windows 10 PC with 12 gigabytes of RAM, a Intel Xeon processor, a GTX 1080 graphics card, 256 gigabyte SSD, expandable with an extra one terabyte of storage, which I have, as well as a one gigabit per second internet connection. It's a cloud-based solution, so you pay 27 pounds a month and you access your Shadow over the internet. So basically what that means is this tiny PC just becomes a gateway to a much more powerful device, enabling you to do things on this PC you otherwise wouldn't have any chance of doing. Now I've been using Shadow for the past few months to play some games and to edit some videos, but I've always had my own PC to fall back on, so I've genuinely used that to create all my content. I figured it was time I put my money where my mouth is and see if I can genuinely replace my £1,000 workstation with this tiny, underpowered, 85 quid mini PC and a Shadow subscription. So to find out, I'm gonna be putting my main PC to bed and I'm gonna be solely using this little guy for the next few weeks. Now, full caveat, I do also have a Surface Pro, which I'll be using here and there, not necessarily to make any videos or play games because it's not powerful enough just for some general web browsing and that sort of thing. I'm also combining it all with a Samsung external hard drive. Not necessarily required for everyone, but I need it for the extra space. So over the next few weeks, all the videos you're gonna see on this channel will be made, created, edited, and uploaded via this PC and my Shadow subscription. And I'll be posting regular updates to let you know how I'm getting on with this setup. So make sure to subscribe if you're interested in seeing those. And now in this video, I'm gonna be giving you my initial impressions of this little PC, as well as guiding through all of my setup to show you how it's gonna work. So let's talk about the initial impressions of this tiny PC. For starters, it's really, really small and it's extremely light at only 250 grams. Around the back, there's power in, micro USB out, single HDMI port, ethernet port, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the side, there's a slot for a micro SD card to expand that tiny internal storage. There's also one USB 3 port and one USB 2 port, which for me isn't enough. So I grabbed this Anker USB hub, which gives me four USB 3 ports for my keyboard, my mouse, my external hard drive, and my SD card reader. I've then finally plugged my microphone into the remaining USB 2 port. It does have Wi-Fi, it's only 2.4 gigahertz, and it's a little bit ropey, so I'm sticking to ethernet. Now, when you do turn it on, the first thing you'll notice is that it's completely silent. Because it's fanless and has no moving parts, it makes absolutely no noise at all, which is quite nice. The Z8350 chip in this thing, it's quad core, but it only runs at 1.4 gigahertz, and it's actually designed for the mobile market. It's not really designed to give you a full desktop replacement, and you can tell. Combine that with the very limited two gigabytes of RAM, and it's not gonna give you the best desktop experience in the world but it's just about enough. I was able to get through the Windows installation process, just okay. The Windows updates took bloody ages. I think it was about three or four hours in total. I can now nip around Windows okay. I can open File Explorer. I can get one, maybe two tabs open in Edge. Any more than that and it starts to cry. I'm not even gonna to attempt to install Chrome because that eats RAM like it's going out of fashion. Now I can already tell it's not sufficient enough to replace your PC on its own. 
So let's have a look at how I've got it all set up to do the things I want it to do. And the first thing we're going to talk about is shadow. Now if you don't really know what I'm talking about with shadow, or you don't really get it, click on the link above and it'll take you to a video I made a few months ago and I'll show you shadow in a little more detail and how it can be used for content creation. Now I'm happy to report that this thing handles the shadow stream really quite well. Not just the H.264, which is the standard codec, but also the much harder to decode H.265 codec as well. Both at 1440p, 60 hertz. It's completely smooth, there's no choppiness to it, it handles it really quite well. All of this video has been edited on DaVinci Resolve on Shadow on this little PC, and I've had no real hiccups at all. So overall, so far, I'm quite impressed. But what about gaming? I've played a few games. I've played Forza Horizon 4 with the Xbox controller, which worked really quite well. And I also played Rainbow Six Siege with the keyboard and mouse, again, which played really well. I've put up some footage for you now to look at, as well as the benchmarks. Both were running at the ultra setting at 1440p, 60Hz. Now another caveat, and something to be aware of, is that Shadow themselves are releasing a proprietary fanless system like this, called the Shadow Ghost. Now the difference is, that thing doesn't run Windows 10, it's running their own Shadow operating system. So it will almost certainly be better at gaming, but it won't do some of the other things which I've set this thing up to do. So it will depend entirely on what you want from a mini PC. So what else do I need this thing to do? Well, I've set up media streaming, I've set up a file share, and I've set up OneDrive. With media streaming enabled, it means I can access video files located on that external hard drive from anywhere within my home network. So I can be down here in the lounge watching the TV, I can access all the files on that drive and I can just watch TV shows, movies from here as they're being streamed from that PC. Now it actually does a pretty good job here, so I can stream it all at 1080p with no issues whatsoever. Now the other thing we've set up, ah. now the other thing we've set up is a network drive, which means I've got a shared drive up on that PC, which again I can access from anywhere on the network. So here's my Surface connected to the Wi-Fi. I'll copy this video file here, which is about 300 megabytes. Open my File Explorer. I have a TinyBox OneDrive folder in my network locations, which I can open up. And then I can paste these files, and those files will be transferred across the network to that external hard drive. Now, because it's only going across my local network, it's actually quite quick. So this is a 300 megabyte file, and it's only taken about 20 seconds or so to copy across to the external hard drive. And last but not least, there's OneDrive. Now, if you speak to anyone that does any sort of content creation on Shadow, they'll tell you the biggest stumbling block is actually getting your files from your device to your Shadow. Now, for example, I get about 12 megabits per second upload. That means a one gigabyte file will take roughly 12 minutes to upload. Now this vlog ended up being about 20 gigs worth of video files. 20 gigabytes at 12 minutes per gigabyte equates to about four hours of upload time. That's quite a long time. The conventional method is to use USB over IP, which means basically I mount my memory card onto my shadow and it appears as a thumb drive. The problem with that is you actually have to make sure you're connected to Shadow for four hours while that's uploading, so it's not an ideal solution. Now, that's where OneDrive comes in, and here's how it works. So once I've finished filming, I can take my memory card and plug it either directly into this PC or onto my laptop, and then I can drop all the files onto that file share which sits on the external hard drive. Then this PC will automatically upload anything within that folder directly to my one terabyte of cloud storage. Now the joy of that means I can spend five minutes transferring the files and then I can turn my laptop off or I can turn this monitor off, I can go do other things, I can go to work, I can go to bed. All of the time this thing will just be slowly uploading all those files to my OneDrive ready for me to grab when I need them. Now it's not actually any quicker than the conventional method but it's considerably more convenient. And then when I'm ready, I can hop onto my shadow, download all my files from my OneDrive, which will take no time at all because of the quick download speeds of the shadow, and then I'm ready to go. Now obviously, it's still not as convenient as just doing it locally and only spending five minutes copying from your card to your PC, which is what I'm used to. But I think it's the best situation I'm gonna get. It might be one of those things that annoys me about this setup, or it might not be too bad. I think I just need to change the way I work. 
So overall, my initial impressions are that this definitely will meet my needs, but it's gonna take some getting used to. The media server is already working well, as is the OneDrive sync and the file share. And of course, it handles shadow well, which for me is actually the most important thing, because without shadow, this thing definitely wouldn't do all the things I needed to do. Without shadow, it's just an okay file slash media server and a relatively poor desktop PC. Over the next few videos, I'll be keeping you all up to date with how I'm getting on with this setup, as well as letting you know if I have any issues, in particular, issues with the shadow. Now, as I said previously, I've used Shadow for a little while now and I really, really do like it, but I've always had my own PC to fall back on. In this setup, I'm entirely reliant on Shadow, so if Shadow doesn't work, this thing is practically useless and I won't be able to do all the things that I want to do. Now, I already know of a few things that I'm not gonna like. The first one is only having one monitor, because this thing only has one HDMI port, I've got to go from a two monitor setup to a single monitor setup. Now I've used dual monitors for years and I have two monitors at work as well, so that's going to be really difficult to get used to. But I think this is an important test to see if it genuinely is a viable desktop alternative. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with how I'm doing with this setup. And if there's anything in particular you'd like to see or you'd like me to try out for you, just pop a comment below and I'll see what I can do. Right, thanks for watching folks. Take it easy and I'll see you next time.